Good morning, my friends. This is Daniel Levy, the Good Mood Coach. Yesterday, we had a client in our coaching counseling practice who came in and said he was depressed for four years, maybe even six, depends how you, how you think about it. And why? I'll tell you why. Because he thought that he should have been able to make better decisions. And he's a nice guy. But as he was making decisions, he felt like he made bad decisions and he felt like even though his circumstances were very difficult not get accepted very easily in his family his brother was picking fights with him he thought he should be able to be a better person than he did and he blamed himself a hundred percent you know i should be able to make better decisions and i think many of us do that we we feel that our free will our ability to choose is completely 100% in situations. Now in a certain sense, we could say yes. And on the other hand, we have to say no. What's the difference? Let's talk about it for a minute. What is the impact of our environment upon us? A lot. <laughs> a lot. So the environmental impact is great, very great upon us. And he's got out of bed from depression level. He wasn't literally in bed, but he couldn't do much of anything. Why? Because of this pressure and self-criticism he placed upon himself. That should, a should we say in cognitive therapy, is a huge, huge, important thing. Listen up. A should is an expectation we place on ourselves or others that is just unrealistic, an unrealistic expectation that we place on ourselves or others. I should have been able to make a better decision. And because I did not make a better decision, I am a bad person. And not true, not true, and not true again. So what is reality? Well, reality, the, um, uh, the holy sages teach us in the Jewish tradition, I have come to believe they're 100% correct. In my opinion, you decide for yourself that um, in the Miktav Eliyahu, uh, Rabbi uh, Dessler um, says that we have this thing called um, a, a free will window. A window, it moves. In our environment, in our situation, our factors are everything. For example, for example, we have a lot of pressure in our life, a lot of stress. And it's much harder to be a kind person. It's a much greater accomplishment when we make a good choice. On the other hand, when people are treating us well and they're saying all sorts of things that are nice and we like them and our brothers are giving us compliments and our friends are saying nice things and business is going well, well, it's not as hard to be nice. So the free will window to be nice is really more up here. It's just much greater. It's This is the place in which we can decide. Above the free will window is kind of a stretch. It's out of what we can do. And below the free will window is basically, it's it's not, we, we can't do the wrong thing. It's like, it's too hard to be mean. Yes, it's too hard to be mean. Like, it's like, it, it just not in that person's nature unless they have a mean nature. So this is a moving target. More clear example, an alcoholic, stereotypic, right? If they go into a bar and all of a sudden their free will window goes like this. Their ability to say no to alcohol is very, very difficult. They go out of the bar, the free will window goes up and their ability to say no to alcohol is much easier. Now, um, many other situations, I'm sure that you can think of one for yourself. What does this have to do with the guy that we started with in the beginning? And what does that have to do with our lives and the choices that we make? Well, really like this. The guy who was depressed was blaming himself. And he was placing unrealistic expectations on himself as if he was the central and only causative factor in deciding those decisions to be impatient, to be irritable to his brother, to be an unkind person. And it's amazing. He's an amazing guy that he even wanted to be kind at, at that young, more tender age. I mean, I, I power to him, you know? We should all be such a nice person at that age. So we send a blessing to him and all people like him that they should give. They should give themselves credit. They should feel good inside that, wow, look at me. I have a good level that I'm starting with. And yes, there's a lot of work to go. Okay, so 
he blamed himself, but there were a lot of other causative factors. The environmental factors, other people factors. Those are causative factors. One could say in cognitive therapy, and my uh, spiritual superhero, Rabbi Shalom Marsh, yeah, and may he live and be well for many long years, he echoes the same thing, that there is our decisions, uh, we are a causative factor, other people are a causative factor, and the environment of the world is a causative factor. And behind that, the higher power is the, the director of all three causal factors, but that's for another time. So the point is that each um, of those factors, he was taking this factor, him, and and all the other two factors, his brother, his brother's choices, how his brother was treating him, and the the world and around him and the biology and the environment and his parents and the situation and all, all of that, not into consideration and only giving himself the credit. And I think many of us do this. We live in a society of um, sort of pioneers, this sort of un, un, unspoken, you know, we're going to go to the West, we're going to settle the prairie and we're going to kill those Indians, right? <laughs> so we will want to do that. And, and when we want to do that, um, we think we're capable of much more than we are. And so if we want to work right with our lives, we have to be realistic. If we start from a place of non-reality, it's not going to work out. Let me say it differently. If I'm in an imaginary um, understanding or an unrealistic understanding, so my expectations are going to be different than they ought to be, maybe, and then I'm going to not be successful, right? If I think that I can achieve, you know, 100, 100 productivity, and really it's only 20, I'm going to come up really short when I get 19. And then I'm going to think I was a big failure. It's going to knock us down. And then we're going to tomorrow definitely not be successful because we're going to be bummed out. So he realized this. He realized, wow. The environment is just huge. And I was tripping out when I thought that I had control over all those decisions. And he said, what I realized is, if I shift the environment that I'm in, then all of a sudden I have choice. Wow, if I shift the environment in, all of a sudden I have choice, great. So, wow. Um, he started to do that, and he's slowly coming out of his depression. He's about 50% out. May he continue and get all the way. So there's a phrase in Jewish teaching that says, Shana makam, Shana mazam. Change your place, change your fortune. And I was thinking this morning, I wanted to share with you, that normally we, uh, we think of that in our tradition, that it's like, okay, it's not going well in Chicago, move to New York. It's not going well in Jerusalem, move to Moscow. Well, uh, maybe, maybe not. But anyways, um, Something different. We can also apply it a little more more subtly in, a, in, in our day-to-day -day lives. If it's not going well in the bar every day because I keep choosing to drink because my friends keep offering, then don't go to the bar. If it's not going well in my life at this job, change the job. But what about it's not going well when I get up and go to the kitchen first thing. So instead... I'm going to get up and go to the backyard and do some stretching first thing. So I actually changed my place. I changed my place in those moments, in that, in that 15 minutes. It was a different place, a different muckle. And that gives me a different environmental factors, which change the free will window I have, like Rabbi Dessler's teaching us. And then I can make a different decision. I hope that's clear. So in other words... We want to have a huge change we, in our change process, and this is a good time to work on that in our tradition, right? That then we need to change our place. Think about changing our place. So if, if, if this makes sense to you, if it resonates, then please take time today to think about your own place and, and when you have a, a problem, a problem. Think about okay, what, what are the factors, the environmental factors that are, playing into that, you know, um, maybe uh, I could change who I'm spending time with at that, in that moment, or what type of energy I have, or where, where I am sitting, or what position I'm sitting in. That's like literally changing your place. Instead of sitting at the chair, I'm standing by the door. That's totally different. So that's what I was thinking, that we can really look at muckum, 
as a change in the environmental factors. You change your place, you change your fortune because you change the whole causative functioning that's happening there. So let's go for it and have a great, great blessed day. Thank you for listening.